Oh, after a great ceremony for the Washington Monument. Whew. Can you bring me a glass of milk and a and a bowl of cherries, please? Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Facts with Presidents. Today's episode is we're talking about the 12th President of the United States... Zachary Taylor, who was pre- who was a Whig. Just remember, remember what we, what we talked about the uh, the Whig Party. They they're the sort of beta of the current Republican Party. And he was president from eighteen forty nine to eighteen fifty. Technically, a year and a half. Ah, I just almost dropped my notes here. Which is my laptop. Anyways. So we have. Let's see here. We have six facts for you all. And. You know. So we're going to begin right now. Fact number one. James Madison. Was his second cousin. As we also explained in the. Uh, James Madison video that he's related to both George Washington and Zachary Taylor which means in turn Zachary Taylor is related to both James Madison and George Washington we didn't mention in the in the episode on George Washington that he is related to Zachary Taylor and James Madison but anyways Number two, he was a descendant of William Brewster, leader of the pilgrims that landed at Plymouth Rock from the Mayflower, you know, in uh, 1620, the, the pilgrims, uh, pilgrimage, the Mayflower Compact, uh, the first Thanksgiving, <clears throat> what was his name, uh, Chief Cornstalk? I think that's what his name was. The uh, Indian that made peace with the uh, the pilgrims that landed there from England. I don't know, something like that. I, I, I don't remember that much of... That's like early American history. That's like after Columbus, but still before like the foundation of our country. Fact number three. Before she died, his daughter... Sarah Knox Taylor was briefly married to Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy. Yep, and uh, I don't know why it says just daughter here, but there, that's better. I'll edit this real quick. All right. Fact number four. <clears throat> He was known for his homespun ways while an officer. He was disheveled, wore a straw hat, and sometimes wore farm clothes under his uniform. Yep. And keep in mind, he was also... uh, He was a major general during the uh, Mexican-American War, which also helped us gain... The two main states or main areas of California and Texas, and pretty much what, most what we call the uh, <clears throat> the western the western half of the country. That was all under uh, James K. Polk, if you remember from yesterday's episode. Uh, number five, he had the nickname Old Rough and Ready. From his rough clothing and his readiness to fight. So yeah, that's why they called him that. And number five. Oh, thank you. Uh, I actually finally got that. <laughs> I finally... Uh, you know, <clears throat> got those uh, cherries and pitcher of milk and 
Ugh. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. Alright, last but not least. There are theories that his snack of cherries and milk was actually and purposely poisoned. Even though there's another theory going around that he was poisoned by arsenic from the cherries. Well, I think that was one of the theories. Some say that he uh, bit into a uh, cherry pit and, you know, cyanide was released into him. And as you all know, if you bit onto a, a cherry pit, you're gone. <laughs> you're getting knocked out. But I, I don't think you can possibly die, although it depends on, I think, how many you <clears throat> bite on. So, thank you so much for watching today's episode. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Yeah, that milk's really good. I have always done my duty. I am ready to die. My only regret is for the friends I have or I leave behind me.